we have a quorum for the resumption of the special town meeting one for the town of Belmont, November 30, uh, 2022. Thank you all for participating. We'll begin as we do each meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. At this point, we do the testing of devices. So if you will vote one, two, or three here. Do let us know if you have any problem. Once the polling is closed, we will scroll. So you can make sure that your name is uh, been where you voted is, is uh, highlighted in, in the uh, aqua color. It's Ellen Cushman. Mary Gavin, I see you have your hand raised. Is there something we can answer for you? Okay. Well, let's scroll uh, the results here, make sure that there are no problems. All right, thank you. Let's continue. Um, I have very brief opening remarks. First, uh, as you all know, we will have only one item tonight, the library, and we will turn to that very shortly. In addition to the individuals and groups admitted to the floor last night, I would like to admit Tom Gatsunas, Jeffrey Birnbaum, and Noel Murphy. A reminder that we will have a one-night town meeting virtually on January, Monday, January 30, 2023, 
beginning at 6.30. And finally, I want to thank many, many individuals. I won't name them individually, but uh, achieving a smooth and informative and fair town meeting is no small task. It requires the participation and involvement and care of many, many town staff and uh, leaders. So I just want to extend a special thanks to all of them for the work they do in order to enable us, the town of Belmont, to have a positive uh, legislative meeting because we are the important legislative body for the town of Belmont. So thank you. And I'll now turn to the town clerk for the reading of the warrant and the review of tonight's procedures. Ellen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, town clerk, do hereby certify that I gave notice of the adjourned session of the special town meeting, number one, held by remote access, November 29, 2022, by posting an attested copy of the notice of the adjournment on the town clerk's official bulletin board in town hall, on the town website, and at least five other places in town, giving notice that the annual town meeting, excuse me, the special town meeting had not been completed and had been adjourned to meet again Tuesday, November 30, 2022 at 6 30 p.m. by remote access briefly stating the business to be acted upon all in accordance with the representative town meeting acts of 1926 is amended and section 30-110c of the general bylaws of the town of belmont and good evening and tonight hopefully will be my last night doing this for a while i'm welcome to night two of belmont special town meeting i will try to be speedy tonight and we'll be repeating pretty much what we've talked about over the past but uh, just as a reminder to everybody and also to get it into the official record moderator mike widmer again has asked me to review a few key points regarding the technology in use for tonight's remote access virtual town meeting as has been sent and has several messages to everyone, uh, please be advised that Turning Point is now called Point Solutions and all voting functions, as you probably saw last night, are unchanged. Town meeting members who neglect to sign in to their individual or personal Point Solutions electronic voting accounts instead of using the guest account are not actually voting in our encrypted secure voting system. Today, November 30th at 1.02 p.m., I emailed all town meeting members the Zoom link, uh, the Point Solutions session ID and a detailed instruction sheet describing how to sign in to that account. We hope everyone will follow those instructions and all of the votes can uh, be counted. Town meeting members, presenters, and some town employees are the only people who are in the Zoom webinar tonight. Members of the public are welcome to watch on uh, belmontmedia.org or on the Community Access Television, which is channel 28 on Verizon, channel 8 on Comcast. This town meeting is being televised by our friends at Belmont Media, and we're really grateful for their help, as always. For town meeting members who are voting at home and watching via the, the cable television broadcast, there is going to be a slight delay in what you see on television from the live event. But your Point Solutions device will open at the same time as everyone else for voting. We will monitor that delay, and the moderator will be announcing how long will be left, but you will, we ask that you vote as soon as possible once the moderator opens voting. Point Solutions is the only way to be given attendance credit and to vote routinely tonight. Town meeting members needing technical support during town meeting should not raise their hands during town meeting, but instead, please call the technology team at the telephone numbers that I provided in my 1.02 um, p.m. email today. We ask all town meeting members to be careful to vote only after the moderator has declared that polling is open and then vote as soon as you can. Check your Point Solutions device for the confirmation that your vote has been received. The little pink bubble of your choice will be filled in. If no bubble is filled in, please vote again and watch for the little pink to fill in the bubble. <clears throat> as a confirmation of your vote. The moderator will give fair warning, as I mentioned, when the polling is about to close. A special note to those town meeting members who are using only one device um, to watch and participate by Zoom, as well as vote using the TT poll. 
When it is time to vote, please double check that you are on the Point Solutions TT Poll window at the top of your screen by confirming it says TT Poll or Point Solutions app, not Zoom, or your vote will not come through. If you are using a device where you're, it's a touch screen and the little button doesn't turn pink, presume that you are on Zoom instead of in Point Solutions and change windows. In the event a town meeting member cannot get their Point Solutions account to record the vote, the town meeting member should immediately please utilize our emergency vote team who are competent and waiting for your calls at the telephone number, numbers that we provided to you in my email today. And then after, please call the technology team to uh, solve that problem before the next vote might be called. Town meeting members will not be able to share their video tonight. Everyone should be on mute whenever not actively speaking to town meeting to avoid background noise distractions, even though sometimes it gives us all a bit of a chuckle. Town meeting members who want to speak should raise their hand by clicking the raise hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom toolbar to be recognized by the moderator. He will recognize people to speak in the order in which the hands were raised. And when the moderator invites you to speak by name, he will uh, name you. The Zoom host will allow you to unmute yourself and a microphone will appear at the bottom left of your screen. Please identify yourself by name and precinct, just like you would if you were in an in-person meeting. I repeat, anyone recognized to speak, please start by stating your name and precinct for our court reporter, who is uh, recording every word of these uh, proceedings tonight. You'll know that your hand is already raised if your Zoom toolbar indicates lower hand. If you're dialed into Zoom using a telephone number exclusively, please press star nine to raise your hand to be recognized, and then you'll just join the line along with everyone else. Town meeting members who wish to make a point of order should use the Q&A tool on the bottom Zoom toolbar by typing the words point of order only. A staff person will inform the moderator immediately that you have a point of order, but the moderator then must call upon you to speak. We caution you that if the moderator is already dealing with a point of order another or another procedural item with other town meeting members, um, we will ask you to listen to the outcome before breaking in with another point of order request. If you do not have a microphone on your computer, please feel free to use the Q&A tool that's at the bottom Zoom toolbar. Type your full name, your precinct, and your full comment or question. A member of the Q&A team will let you know the name of the Q&A team member who will be acting as your proxy to town meeting. Listen for the moderator to recognize that person by name who will on your behalf read the question or comment exactly as you have typed it. And finally, if the moderator asks excuse me, if the moderator asks for unanimous consent and you choose not to give it, you must immediately use the raise hand function or the Q&A function to get the attention of the team and the moderator. We'll be watching for those raised hands during that time. And if we see any, of course, the moderator will then instead call for an electronic vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cushman. We'll now go to the preliminary vote. This, as you well know, is required by the legislation enabling us to have a, um, a virtual meeting. Moved that the town meeting will meet and act on all matters on the warrant for this special town meeting by means of the video and audio conferencing and voting technologies described in the moderator's October 3, 2022 letter to the select board posted with the warrant. So now we will open the polls and uh, you can vote on this preliminary motion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Becker, did you raise your hand? And seconds. Uh, 
All right, let's close the polls and show the vote. So the final vote is 246 in favor, two opposed. I could scroll this quickly. All right, thank you. Again, for the record, the final vote is 246 in favor, two opposed and no abstention. We now go to the what, first the order of the articles. Uh, there is no article one, so we will hear the order of the articles, article two. Uh, so let's turn to the motion. Um, I'll, let me explain. Uh, the process tonight. Uh, Kathy Cohane will read the motion. I will then get the votes from the Select Board and Warrant Committee. Um, Select Board Chair Mark Palolo will make some introductory comments, and then we will turn to Kathy Cohane and Claire Colburn for their presentation uh, on the library authorization, and then we'll open up for discussion. So with that, uh, I will turn to Ms. Cohane to read the motion, please. You may be muted, Kathy. I was doing such a good job. Uh, Kathy <laughs> Cohane, Precinct 2, moved that the town appropriate the amount of $34 $500,000 for the purpose of paying costs of designing, demolishing, constructing, originally equipping and furnishing the Belmont Public Library located at 336 Concord Ave in Belmont and all costs incidental and related thereto the project, set amount to be expended under the direction of the Belmont Public Library Building Committee. To meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the select board, is authorized to borrow said amount under Mass General Law Chapter 44 or pursuant to any other enabling authority. Thank you. Mr. Palolo, does the select board have a vote? Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. Mark Palolo, Chair of the Select Board, Town Meeting Member at Large. The select board enthusiastically and unanimously recommends favorable action. Thank you. And Jeff Lubian, the Warren Committee vote, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Jeff Lubian, Chair of the Warren Committee. The Warren Committee unanimously votes for favorable action for Article 2. Thank you. Uh, we now turn to the presentation. We'll begin with Mr. Palillo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mark Palillo, Chair of the Select Board, Town Meeting Member at Large. If I could just take one minute. Mr. Moderator, to thank you for your leadership. Also to thank the Town Clerk and the Town Clerk um, staff as well as the town administrator and the town administrator staff for the amount of work that they put in to um to conduct this virtual town meeting and all town meetings are really uh, the select on behalf of the select board we want to thank you for your efforts so with that mr moderator first and foremost um i, I want to comment that i um, very excited about this new library building project and very excited to see it completed over the next few years uh, it's a huge win for our community, and um, all along the way, uh, the, um, on behalf of the select board, we enthusiastically supported this project. I want to comment briefly on uh, the motion that was just read and the difference between the $39,500,000 uh, total cost that was projected and, and communicated all along uh, by the Board of Library Trustees, the Building Committee, and also the Library Foundation. And what the motion uh, reads tonight, $35 million, $34 million, $500,000. Let me just read what we included in the article. This article will authorize the funds needed to build the Belmont Public Library as approved by the voters at the November 8th general election. The article requests the town meeting authorize the borrowing of $34 million, $500,000. Remaining funds needed to meet the construction costs of $39 million, $500,000 will be funded through grants, donations, and other funding sources. 
The library trustees will report out a town meeting, the total dollars committed, projected, and received to date, and they, um, Kathy Cohen will do that tonight. It is the intention of the library trustees and the select board, and we've discussed this at length, to apply any additional funds received from grants and donations exceeding the $39,500,000 total to offset the $34,500,000 borrowing by the town. The select board, in discussions with the library trustees, felt very strongly that the amount of um, the authorization needed to be $34,500,000 for the purpose of uh, to borrow. And the reason for that is that, you know, uh, through the very robust and significant fundraising campaign uh, to raise $5 million that was communicated to the community, um, they were able to offset the, the building cost by that amount. And that was clearly articulated and communicated to the residents of the community was clearly articulated and communicated to the voters of this community. So we felt very strongly together that the amount that we should authorize should only be 34500000 knowing full well that the full bill will be $39,500,000. We feel very confident in the $5 million that was raised. It was communicated, the, the tax burden on that, on the average family home was communicated as well. And that's the reason why it's $34,500,000. And we feel very confident that the bill will take place within the perimeters that will be outlined tonight. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Hello, Thank good you. evening. Oh. I, I, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Ms. Gov. I was going to introduce you. Mayor <laughs> Colburn is uh, chair of the Library Building Committee. Go ahead, Ms. Colburn. Hi, Claire Colburn, uh, town meeting member, precinct three. Uh, I'm I'm just thrilled to be here uh, presenting this project that has taken decades to come to fruition. It's taken the efforts of many, many individuals and over a thousand donors as well. I'll be talking about the process, uh, the cost, although Mark covered some of that, uh, the schedule, uh, as well uh, as well as um, oh, I forgot the last point of what I was going to talk about, but the the cost. Oh, and the team, of course, the team that's going to deliver the project. Uh, next, please. So, starting with the team, the architect is Odin Zello. Uh, they have des designed and built um, many many projects uh, that are public libraries in Massachusetts. Uh, CHA, you probably know as well. Uh, that has um, been involved with many of the projects as an owner's project manager in Belmont. I'm not gonna go through every individual on this list, but what I'm gonna do is highlight the, the strengths of this committee. So we have a number of architects and engineers on this, on this committee. We have attorneys, we have sustainability people that um, number more than just one, we've got three. Um, these are accredited individuals, um, very knowledgeable in the field of sustainability. We have people who have been on building committees in the past for the town. Um, and we also have uh, trustees and friends. Uh, next, please. I think we're incredibly lucky to have the expertise that we have on this uh, committee. So thinking about the path forward, uh, the feasibility study and the schematic design are completed. Um, the design development phase would start in January. And this phase is really as it sounds, it's refining the schematic design, um, adding the lessons learned that we learned from COVID. Uh, we know there are things that we do differently now, and we've got to build that into the, into the design. Um, adding the uh, comments and emails that, that we've received, the uh, covered, having covered uh, bike racks, that's, that's very important. Um, that was a comment that somebody emailed me um, and that was not included in schematic design, but that'll get uh, into the design development phase. This also gives us an opportunity to have more public forums. We've had seven to date and we will have more to uh, get your input and implement that into the, into the project. This, de this design development phase takes uh, six months um, and then that takes us to the next phase of uh, construction documentation. So that's the process of taking the design and uh, creating the specifications and the construction drawings uh, that, that act as the manual uh, for the general contractor to build uh, the library. The next phase is the competitive bid phase. The committee, uh, the library building committee met 
three separate times to talk about the uh, delivery method for the project. And we voted uh, on having a general contractor. And we did this for a number of reasons. One, it's typically less expensive upfront. Uh, it's used for smaller projects uh, and uh, projects that are not tied to like an academic schedule, for instance, um, and the fact that it is uh, new construction um, and not phased made it a very good candidate for this delivery method. We're looking to break ground in the early spring of 2024 and construction and move in time would have us opening in the fall of 2025. Next please. So Mark covered the cost, but I just want to reiterate the $39.5 million is an estimated total project cost. And this is estimated from two different entities and it's been estimated as recently as April of this year. Um, those two entities are from CHA and the design team and they came together and reconciled their independent uh, estimates. Offsetting uh, that cost is the $5 million that's been raised to date so that the total uh, borrowing ask is $34.5 million. What does this mean for uh, Belmont uh, residents? It means that for a million dollars of the assessed uh, home value, uh, the cost in taxes, increase in cap taxes will be $232. Next, please. So this is a summary of the summary, actually. And I invite you to go onto the website uh, to, to get the detail for this. Uh, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what is included in the, in the project cost, because we get a lot of questions about that. And there is some confusion between construction cost and project cost. So the project cost is everything. Uh, this includes the designer um, and engineer's fees. It includes furnishing um, and equipment and technology, uh, as well as um, hazardous abatement, demolition of the project um, at the current building that is um, constructing the current, the new building. And then um, it also involves uh, the, the contingencies that are typical to a project. What it also includes is an additional 5% contingency. This is above and beyond typical um, contingencies for a project. And we did this for a lot of reasons. If you remember the schematic design was completed and the, and the first estimate was completed right before COVID. COVID obviously has thrown a monkey wrench in a lot of things, uh, especially um, supply chains. A lot of other things have also impacted uh, supply chains in that time period. If you think back on the Suez Canal, um, there was nearly a, a train strike that was recently uh, averted. Um, even the, even the um, ice storms in Texas that probably most of us don't remember had a very large impact. So there have been more global impacts um, recently uh, that have affected affected uh, costs for construction. And so we wanted to ensure that we would be safeguarded against unforeseen conditions that are beyond the site um, and the construction um, zone. So we added this 5% volatility um, contingency above and beyond the other costs. And that brings us to a total cost of 39,487,807. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see more detail. Um, it's a little hard to read, which is why I summarized it um, in the previous slide. But you can see the granular uh, detail about all that's included, including uh, temporary um, moving and um, locations for the library services. Um, so I welcome you to, to go on and look in more detail and follow up with any questions. Uh, but Kathy's gonna, Kathy's gonna speak a little bit more to those uh, library services that will be occurring while the project is under construction. Great. 
So Kathy Cohen, Vice Chair of Library Board of Trustees, member of the Building Committee and Precinct 2 Town Meeting member. As a trustee, I can tell you emphatically that we will have services, library services during construction. Um, it is the trustee and the director's desire that all services that we offer today would be offered during the period of construction. That said, we focused on key objectives and what's most important, knowing that we might not be able to provide everything. And so you see here, you know, kind of a selection of the things that we think are most important. Children's services and children's programs utilization today is among the highest usage of the current library. So important that during the period of construction, we continue to offer that. That includes programs, story hour, and access to books and browsing for children's. We will have programs both in person, hybrid and remote. Uh, In-person programs will be in satellite locations around the town. We'll continue to offer all the online resources that we do that you can access in the library space that we'll have temporarily, as well as online. Important that we offer off, offer books for browsing and, um, and, and also seating because the library is a destination and will be even during the period of construction. Access to computers, Wi-Fi and printing, um, not everybody has access to those resources at home, so that's a vital service that we provide today and want to continue to provide during construction. We do know that we'll have to store some of the materials, whether they be books or collections, so we'll look to do that. And we're thinking about how to prioritize what we take with us and what we store. We will have access to the Minuteman Library Network, uh, which is a current, currently a vital resource and we'll, we will rely on even more heavily during construction. Next page. Um, funding. We've committed, as Mark mentioned, $5 million in private funding. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we have had over a thousand donors, unique donors, uh, who have contributed to the library building project. All funds that have been raised or in, or in hand are restricted to the use for a new library building. We have met with Floyd a number of times. He's been a great um, supporter and, and, and helping us guide us through this process over the last months, uh, but in particular about this process, which is donating the funds and transfer the donated funds and transferring them to the town for the building project. The $5 million in donations will fund the first phase of the project, as Claire noted, largely the work in 2023, which is design development. And what that means is that the borrowing by the town will commence not in 23, but in 2024. And Floyd could speak more to that, but uh, spoke with us recently about uh, that being the springtime being a favorable time for from a borrowing perspective. All donors will be recognized on the wall for all, large and small. Um, and then additionally, large donations will be recognized as sponsors. On the next page, where are the, where is the money held today? There are in fact eight over eight hundred thousand dollars that are assets that are held by the trustees, actually held on on the books of the town as we speak. There's an additional million dollar in assets held at the Belmont Library Foundation. Many of you know that the Belmont Savings Bank. Foundation has granted a, a very generously a $2 million grant. Um, there is $250,000 in state ARPA funds that are on hand today, according to Glenn Castro at the town that are available and will be directed towards this project. And last, we have uh, just under a million dollars, $950,000 in pledges and grants by individuals and corporations. Um, those are legally binding contracts that we worked with George Hall to, um, to review and approve. And they're structured such a way that the payment for those pledges is due um, no later than the, uh, a year from now. So folks can pay in one or two installments, but all funds will be received by the end of 2023. <laughs> We've noted at the bottom and we've spoken before that we will continue to fundraise and look for additional sources, but our commitments to the, to the community, 
to um, to the voters and to you as town meeting members was five million dollars, and we're confident in that number as we as we represent it here. So with that, I will say thank you. Um, this has been a journey, um, and uh, we look forward to working with you all on, on, on building the library for our community as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Cohen, Ms. Colburn. Um, briefly, I want to ask Town Council George Hall to uh, explain to the town meeting members their role in this authorization, in particular, how it differs from the vote of the public uh, that approved the debt exclusion uh, three weeks ago. So, Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, George Hall, Town Council. Um, this is a question that came up during the Warrant Committee brief briefing um, from a few people, you know, why are there two votes? Why does it have to be approved twice, once by the voters at the ballot and again by the town meeting? And I'm I'm sure many town meeting veterans already know the answer to this question, but for those who don't, I will explain that the votes are really on two different things. The, the town meeting remains the appropriating authority. The decision to appropriate by borrowing uh, belongs to the town meeting. Um, and that is what we are voting on tonight. What the uh, voters voted uh, at the ballot was the question of whether the debt service, the costs of the principal and interest on the debt, could be assessed as additional taxes over and above the levy limit imposed by Proposition 2 and a half. So they're very dis distinct questions. Um, the, the, the appropriating authority remains the town meeting. The, the, the way uh, or the means of paying for the debt service through um, additional taxation belongs to the voters. Uh, and that um, is what was passed at the state election. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Hall. We'll now turn to discussion. Getting, getting some feedback here. Now it's better. We'll now turn to the discussion of the uh, motion. We'll begin with Erica Beth Seidel. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, Erica Zeidel, on meeting member, Precinct 8. Um, I rise in enthusiastic support of this motion. Um, I believe it is our duty as representatives of our precincts to honor the wishes of our constituents. Um, and so I am very happy to vote in support of this. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ellen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Cushman, the town clerk. There are eight people in line. Heather Rubeski, Mary Lewis, and Melissa McIntyre are the first three. Thank you. Heather Rubeski, you're next. Heather Rubeski, Precinct 7, town meeting member. I am also rising in support of voting for this tonight. I believe that it, in every precinct in town, um, voted favorably on this, which means as the elected representatives for the constituents that we serve, it is our duty and um, to represent those people who have spoken very clearly to us. This was not a close call, and um, I am happy to be here tonight to represent Precinct 7. Thank you. Mary Lewis. Yes, hi, Mary Lewis, town meeting member, Precinct 1. I also rise in support of this motion. Um, in Precinct 1, we voted 901 to 594 in favor of the debt exclusion for the library. It is my duty as a representative of Precinct 1 to support. That vote and make sure that the money is appropriated. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa McIntyre. Hello, Melissa McIntyre, Precinct 8 Town Meeting Member. I am also rising in enthusiastic support of this motion. I worked very hard to help get this passed, as did many other town meeting members and many other members of the community. And in the conversations that I had with citizens as I was canvassing, People expressed enthusiastic for support for enthusiastic support for the new library. 
And I also believe that it is my duty as a town meeting member to represent the members of my precinct who voted in favor of this new library. So thank you very much. I intend to vote yes. Helen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, the town clerk. At this time, there are another eight people in line, starting with eight, Rachel Heller, Matt Taylor, and Amy Kirsch. Thank you, Rachel Heller, you're up. Hi, Rachel Heller, town meeting member, precinct three. I rise in support based on the merits and voting for a bright future for a ta our town. I urge people to vote yes. And I wanna add that as elected representatives, we are entrusted to make decisions for, by the voters, for, for the voters. For most decisions, we only know what voters think based on conversations we've had with our neighbors, meetings we may attend, what we read on social media or in print media. For tonight's decision, we have concrete evidence of what our constituents want and what the town wants. We have their vote and their vote tells us overwhelmingly to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Matt Taylor. Good evening, neighbors. This is Matt Taylor, uh, town meeting member, precinct one, uh, also a member of the warrant committee. Uh, I enthusiastically support this motion uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the library dollars are tremendously well spent. Uh, over the summer, I poured through the trove of documentation and resources about the library, the building project, the history and the detailed evaluations of the alternatives, and specifically uh, how our library serves our community. Uh, you can read the details of this on 02478.org, but in the most conservative estimate, our community receives at least $10 million in services and value from our library every year. The voters voted with full information about what this project was cost, and this was a significant ask for our community, and they approved it. They approved this vote by more than 16 percentage points. It's an outstanding value for our community, and I'm glad that our town meeting will allow us to invest in the future, not just the current generation, but for the future generations of Belmont residents. Thank you. Thank you. Amy Kirsch. Hi, Amy Kirsch, Precinct 8. The library is where community meets and connects with each other. It is worthy of our money, and I'm so proud of everyone that worked on this campaign. I am echoing everyone in front of me saying yes, yes, vote for both. Thank you. Thank you. Michael McNamara. Uh, Michael McNamara, town meeting member, Precinct 7. I just wanted to say my strongest support this project. I think that the voters have been very clear with everyone from Precinct 1 to Precinct 8, everywhere in between, mm -hmm. that they really want this library. They feel like it is an important part of our community. And I would just also add that speaking of about the issue of um, this sort of a little bit of disconnect between the town voting for something and then the town meeting members um, actually finishing the sort of finishing the two step process, if, if you will, sort of the Seinfeld episode of you take the reservation, then you have to make sure the reservation actually goes through. Um, I would just quickly note that it is extremely important, I feel, like we go and do this follow through for the town meeting and also for the voters, because if the voters come back to us and say, hey, you're asking us for money for, let's say, an override for the for the roads or for the sidewalks, if we were to reject this this sort of desire of town of the town and the voters, they may come back to us and say, well, remember that time you asked for all this money and we said yes, and then you didn't do it? There would be, I think, repercussions down the down the line, including trust issues, if we did not uh, follow through with this process. So I strongly vote yes. I think it's a great building that will help a lot of people in town, rich people, poor people, people with kids, people without kids, elderly and young alike. Thank you. Thank you. Town Clerk. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman. At this time, there are five people with their hands in the air. PJ Looney, Ada Baptista, and Adriana Poole are the first three. Thank you. PJ Looney, you're up. Hey, Mike. Hey, I, I timed this, so it should come in just under three minutes. So I hope people would listen to it. There is good reason why town meeting requires a two-thirds vote to appropriate funds for a debt exclusion. We are the fiscal checks and balances for the town. We are supposed to be well-informed and take the time to deliberate and understand the impact of each vote. The vote is decided by a large mar margin to approve the library debt exclusion. We are being asked if they made the right, right choice, knowing what we know. To do that, we need to understand if the voters had enough information and accurate information to reach that conclusion. 
based on my personal conversations with well over 100 residents, I can tell you that none of them, none of them had a clue about the Collins report or the $8 million structural deficit projection for fiscal year 24. Many are confused by what a structural deficit means. It's easy to vote for something when you don't know what may be lurking behind the curtain. I believe most voters fell into this category. Most voters don't know, don't know we still have town employees working without contracts going on over two years. One might ask, is passing the tax increase the responsible thing to do, or are we putting the cart before the horse? Shouldn't we prioritize the operating budget before we spend $35 million on a new building? That wasn't asked of the voter, but it is something town meeting should be considering with this vote. While the Yes campaign did a good job of presenting the new building and stuck to the price tag they settled on, they did shift to an aggressive fear campaign, which still needs explaining. I quote from the campaign website and a letter sent out to voters from a major donor. The library is a fire hazard on the brink of failure. If you do not believe me, take the tour of the building. There are serious electrical and fire issues. On the website, the signs are all there. The imminent risk of fire, flood, and uninhabitable conditions is real. Who says those things without immediately contacting the responsible entities in town to address them? I did contact the fire department about fire code policy. And here you go. In general, violations of the fire code are identified during routine inspections of a building or following an investigation based on notification of a potential problem through other mediums. I would like to know, did either the committee or the major donor contact the fire department building inspector or board of health to report the imminent dangers and serious fire issues? And if Ms. they did, here's the second Mr. Looney, Mr. Looney, can I interrupt? Yes, sure. We're, we're not debating the campaign. We're debating, well, uh, can you get back to uh, the it's finances? Be relevant. I'm, I'm 20 seconds, oh. I'll be done, Mike, and you'll understand the linkage, okay? Thank you. And if they did, here's the second part. In cases when a violation is egregious or there's imminent danger. Excuse me, only Mr. Moderator. This is Nancy Caselli of the town clerk's office. We have a point of order from Mary Lewis. Um, pardon me, uh, PJ. Yes, Miss Lewis. Go ahead, Mary. I had the same uh, concern that you did, uh, Mr. Moderator, and I'm I'm glad that you addressed the um, straying off subject. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go back, Mr. Looney. You may continue. Yeah, sorry, Mike. I just got a. All right. Yes. Okay. In cases when a violation is egregious or there is an Im imminent danger, the only option may be to close or limit access to a building. The library never closed. It's open. The linkage I was trying to make there with this point of order is that I don't know if the voters made up their mind based on this idea that the fire, the building was going to be burning down. So I can't, I can look at voters and say, okay, they decided to vote for a library. They don't know about the town's fiscal condition based on what I know. And they were told that this is a fire hazard. And I just don't see any evidence to support that. I see that as fear moving. So to finish up, our job tonight is to take all the information available to us and do what's right for Belmont. We need to weigh the vote, but also weigh the additional information that we as town meeting members are aware of. I will be noting vote. <laughs> I will be voting no. And we encourage the town to get its operating budget in order and then come back with this request and the rink request. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ellen? Sorry, Mr. Moderator, uh, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, Ada Batista, and Adriana Poole, Chris Grande are the first three out of eight. All right, Mr. Batista. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Ada Batista, Tom Pre and meeting member of Precinct 3. I'd like to call the question, please. Mr. Batista has called the question. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more people in line. Um, is there a second to Mr. Baptista's motion? Please raise your hand. Yes, there is. Um, so we'll go immediately to a vote on terminating debate. This, as we all know, takes two thirds. So if you wish to terminate debate, vote yes. If you do not favor terminating, want to continue the debate, vote no. So let's open the polls.
are we doing on still not? We're waiting on Belmont Media. So we'll do 15 more seconds. All right, let's close the polls and show the tally. The motion to terminate debate fails, 156 in favor, 99 opposed. That is short of the two thirds required. So let's scroll through the results. We'll go back to the line. There were seven individuals in line. And Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, the town clerk, as we are watching the scroll, just to remind everyone, Adriana Poole, Chris Grande, and Travis Frank actually are the first three out of eight people with their hands raised when you resume. Thank you. I think we do have some emergency votes, but they won't change the um, the outcome. So uh, 156 in favor, 99 opposed, the motion fails. So we'll go back to our debate. Adriana Poole, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adriana Poole, town meeting member, Precinct 1. Um, I want to remind everybody that the article in front of us is not about uh, discussing if the Belmont voters were educated enough about the uh, issues related to the library when they went to the polls. Um, it's really about respecting the wishes of the voters in the town of Belmont, the trust they put in us as their representative uh, to carry on the this this issue and finalize the the project so it's not about our personal opinions how we feel about it how we voted at th three weeks ago it's about our duty as town meeting members to represent our constituents and vote yes my vote will be a very enthusiastic yes, and I thank everybody who worked so hard for all those years uh, to keep this, you know, to bring this to the point that we have it tonight. I also urge everybody to keep in mind that everything we do in town, all the big projects that we take upon us from schools to library, everything are directly related to our property value and how it holds over time. Thank you. Thank you, Chris Grande. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer, uh, Chris Grande, town meeting member, precinct one. Uh, with the financial position that I can only charitably describe as suboptimal and a plethora of other critical financial needs awaiting, I'm going to vote against that author authorization. I think we can only ask our citizens for so much. The vote to support library funding was fairly, <laughs> was fairly strong. I respect that. There is a reason, though, that Proposition 2.5 was passed many years ago and that we have a two-thirds majority required to authorize indebting the town. Both of these speed bumps help ensure that a clear and cognizant majority only approve large changes to town finances and subsequently residents' personal finances. As monthly library fund supporters, it's not as if we don't support our library, but these plans seem a bit, bit out of touch with this town at the moment. I don't want to spend a long time on fiscal responsibility, but here are five budgetary points that residents need to ponder. One, our firefighters are working without a contract for over three years. People before things, we made commitments and we need to live up to them. And once we do have a contract with these folks, it's going to be three years of retroactive pay we're going to have to come up with. 
Number two, the library needs some kind of work, which I agree with, and that funding is now or later going to hit us. Number three, the hockey rink is worse than the library, and it just doesn't work anymore. As we heard from last night's meeting, it, it doesn't work. So we are have to add the we're going to have to add the expenses of out of town rink usage immediately to the budget. It's no longer a theoretical item; it is now an actual item. Uh, which leads to my fourth point. The town budget will require its own substantial Proposition 2.5 override very soon just to, to make up our structural deficit. And lastly, the pension. Our pension is very underfunded, and no provisions have been made for black swan scenarios. But I can tell you, if you're using the good stock market we've had for the last 10 years as a way to bail out the pension, I wouldn't do that. Merely a 1% lower assumption in our pension assumed return increases our liability by over $22 million. I don't think we have an extra $22 million. And however, if we have it, that's not even black swan scenario. That's a 1% lower. If we had a truly a black swan scenario, that pension liability could increase by $40, $50 million. At some point, it gets very large for a small town like Belmont to make these things up. And they are required obligations that we have. We can't get out of those. So in conclusion, Medford recently completed their new library. And here's how their funding broke down. $34 million was the original cost estimate, but bidding actually brought it down to $27.5 million. I'd like to get those contractors. $3 million came from Mike Bloomberg, $12.29 million from the state. Excuse and me, another two Mr. Million Moderator? Yes. This is Nancy at the town clerk's office, and um, there was a point of order from Paul Roberts. Go ahead, Mr. Roberts. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Paul. Yes, the speaker is well off the topic of the $34.5 million. He's talking about uh, the, the town's uh, pension obligations. He's talking about different projects in different towns. I think we need to keep this focused on the Belmont library allocation and uh, not allow our speakers to wander off into uh, speculation about another a lot of unrelated uh, financial issues and around other communities that uh, are not Belmont. Uh, Mr. Roberts, I do not agree with you. I think the town's finances and the financial conditions of the town are directly germane to a discussion of authorizing $34.5 million. Yeah, Mr. Weber, sorry, thank you. That You said that much more charitably than I was going to answer. Uh, I was on my last sentence anyway. Uh, the net cost to Medford for their library was $10 million. Ours is 34. We're going to spend 340% what Medford spent a town that is two and a half times large, over two times larger than us population wise, has a budget 40% larger than ours. We're going to spend 340% what Medford spent, mainly because we missed out on some past mistakes. And again, like to have a library, but I'll just finish with right now, interest rates are high, inflation is high. We really can't afford this. I think the points I brought up were very germane to the fact that we're going to have to come back with another override, a tremendous, probably large override to people. And just things to consider. Thanks for your time. Thanks for, I think I went over a few seconds there and I appreciate everybody listening. Uh, thank you, Ellen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Christian, the town clerk at this time, 14 people have their hands raised. Travis Frank, Jolanta Erkert and Ann Mann are the first. Thank you, Travis Frank, you're next. Hi, Mr. Moderator, Travis Frank, Precinct 5. Um, I was going to call the question, uh, but uh, I would like the moderator's input on, uh, you know, respectfully knowing that we just had a vote and that we've only had two speakers since then. Um, maybe I could let a few more people speak and be placed in line afterwards. Uh, and if you, uh, I'd like to, I know that we just voted, but yeah. Yeah, I will accept doing that. Yes, that's within the moderator's prerogative. I will let... Uh, um, six or seven more people speak, and then I will call on you. Jolanta Eckert. Uh, good evening. It's Jolanta Eckert, and I'm a town meeting member from Precinct 3. Um, I'm really struggling with this, of how to vote on this particular article. Um, you know, for multiple reasons. I do believe that the town needs a new library and that the conditions of the library, um, the current library are really need to be addressed. What I am really struggling with is investment of $40 million in a brick and mortar type of environment 
new generation is really migrating to electronics. And, um, you know, some of that is, is obviously dependent on the time as well as the size of the building um, and the costs associated with that. So I'm really struggling with, you know, um, with that. The other time, my husband is in development and construction and, you know, he keeps telling me this is like the worst time ever to be able to start a building project. Um, the supply chains are, are terrible. The subcontractors will not hold price. They will not even give you price um, because they, they're not sure how much things will cost in, two, in six months or 12 months. So I would anticipate that the, the cost of this um, effort may be, you know, the 5% that there has been applied is probably gonna be insignificant, um, you know, to the total cost. And the last questions I have is, and I applaud everyone from, from the, the effort associated with raising $5 million. I think that is a significant amount of money. But my question is, is that since, you know, this is gonna be an ongoing effort if, and if this is approved, um, you know, will the, the, will the campaign for private donations stop or will it continue? And, and I guess I would assume it should continue, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, and if additional money is raised, will that be applied to reduce the significant burn that is being placed on the taxpayers with, with this initiative? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eckert. Um, that last question, uh, I would ask, uh, I guess, Kathy Cohen, if you could address the question, please. Yeah, Kathy Cohen, Precinct 2, Town Meeting Member um, and Member of the Building Committee, Vice Chair, Library Trustee. So, Yolanda, thank you for the question. Yes, um, as, as mentioned on one of the slides, there are additional sources that we're pursuing. Um, and, 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 and as mentioned in the information that accompanied the article, that as additional funds are raised, they would go to reduce the, the borrowing uh, that's being authorized by the town. So the, the items that, that we've noted before, there is a million dollar bond bill sitting on um, the governor's desk pending signature. Um, it's not a given, but it is something that our legislative uh, folks have been very good about working to look for additional funding. And there is additional private funding as well. Thank Mr. You, Moderator. Ms. Yes. May I make a comment? Claire Colburn, town meeting precinct uh, three. Yes, of course, Ms. Colburn. I just, I wanted to also just address uh, the comment about um, the, the timing of the building, but also uh, about uh, bids. Um, these, when, when a project is bid, these bids are held. Um, they're not, they're, there's not a, a, a there can be a time limit, but it's for the project as long as the project doesn't get delayed. So those bids would be um, known uh, costs um, at the time of the bid openings. Um, the other um, uh, the other point I wanted to make, um, boy, I'm very forgetful tonight. It's been a long week for all of us. <laughs> um, oh, was about the timing was just to consider escalation. So. Uh, every year that we put this project off, there's a, about a million and a half in escalation. And then that obviously gets worse. It compounds. Um, so just to, to be cognizant of that um, as well. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ellen. Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien, Chris from the town clerk. 15 people have their hands in the air. And Ian Mann, Aaron Pickalingus, and Heather Brenhouse are the first three. Ann Mann, you're next. Hi, this is Ann Mann from Precinct 4, and um, I have faith in the voters and what their choice was when they had a chance to go and vote, and I fully support this. I want to have a library that's accessible for handicapped people, and I appreciate all the work that everyone has done on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aaron Pinkaligas. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much. Aaron Pickalingus, Town Meeting Member of Precinct, Town Meeting Member of Precinct Six. Um, I just want to say that I note my respect uh, for and trust in the voters who I represent, uh, and I will be voting yes for this motion. Thank you. 
Thank you, Heather Brenhaus. Yes, thank you. I wanted to um, thank the Library Committee for all of their work, and I just wanted to Ms. Brenhaus? To... Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, you can hear me now? I can. Sorry about that. Yeah, so I wanted to thank the Library Committee, and I wanted to rise in strong support of this. <laughs> Heather, um, introduce yourself, please. Sorry, first, yeah. for the record. Brent House, Precinct 7. I did that before when nobody could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, again, I support this, and I think I just wanted to raise that I think it's it's dangerous to present our voters um, as being uneducated on these issues. I spoke with many people myself. Some were against the library. Many more were for, as the vote actually um, uh, represented. And many of those people, some of them had read the Collins report. M none of those people presented uh, potential fire hazards as the reasoning for needing a library. I think that we're either going to be throwing good money after bad um, if we delay this project, or we're actually going to invest in our future um, like the voters have already um, uh, voted for. So that's what I wanted to, um, I wanted to, again, rise in strong support of this. Thank you. Thank you. Taylor Yates. Thank you. This is Taylor Yates, town meeting member, of Precinct 2. I rise in enthusiastic support of this motion, uh, if for no other reason than it was the uh, clear preference of the voters. And I will just add, uh, regarding the financial concerns of the town overall, you know, I, this is my first year on town meeting, so I don't know exactly how we ended up in the situation where we have so many, so much deferred capital, deferred maintenance, and operating budget shortfalls, but it's very difficult to for me to see how we're going to get out of them by kicking the can down the road on this project. Thank you. Um, Ellen? Mr. Moderator, Ellen O'Brien Cushman, the town clerk. There are 10 people with their hands in the air, Jer Jerry Hovsepian, Lisa Pargoli, and Elizabeth Schmidt of the first three. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Hovsepian. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I commend the building committee for their hard work all these years. Uh, uh, but I have a question. Now, will any of the assets be sold for additional income? Or will some assets be reused? Ms. Cohane, do you want to answer that question or Ms. Coburn? So, Kathy Colhane, Precinct 2, town meeting member, and, and Claire, I'm sure, will have something to add to it. Um, so there, you know, I, I'll quote one of the folks on, from the, on the building committee who is also a member of the permanent building committee that said that there is nothing worth salvaging in the building. If there is, we will certainly try to do so. Um, and somebody did express interest, um, although it may have been casually, for some of the granite curving. So if there is anything that is salvageable that we can use, we will absolutely do it. If there's anything that is saleable that we won't be using, we will certainly look to do that. And Claire Coburn, Precinct 3, town meeting member. Uh, I'll just mention that we do have a couple of items that have been earmarked to be salvaged. Uh, the, uh, the stained glass in the uh, children's room, current room, and the uh, memorial uh, for veterans. So we have a couple of things that, um, and we'll be looking at that more closely, but of course, we want to like to try to save and reuse everything we can. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lisa Pargoli, you're next. Hi. Can you hear? Lisa, can you unmute? Oh, hello? Hello, now you're, we can hear oh, you now. Okay, Wanna thank you. Start, uh, start now. Yeah, Lisa Pargoli, uh, town meeting member, precinct four. Um, and I just, um, I just wanna say that um, I think for me, uh, a lot of what I, what I would have said, um, PJ and Chris Grande are covered. So I'm gonna skip to the fact that um, I will be voting no on this. Um, I have a, a lot of difficulty with the 
wants as most to needs as the usual Belmont over the top. In a time like this, we can't afford to just be spending money on things that are not necessary. Um, and the other thing that is really the deal breaker is the fact that our, our firefighters and our police officers don't have a contract. I don't see we should be spending money on anything else until their needs are met. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me say at this point, we've heard from, I think, seven people. Um, I'm going to hear for two more, and then I'm going to ask Mr. Frank to uh, uh, make his motion. Uh, it's This kind of thing is always a balancing act, and I'm glad that Mr. Frank uh, offered to hear other discussion, because I think that's important. But it's also fair to uh, hear his motion and get the sense of the meeting, whether they want to continue debate or not. So I think uh, that's the balance. So I'll call on Elizabeth, Elizabeth Schmidt. Now this is Elizabeth Schmidt, town meeting member, precinct four. I'm mystified and dismayed as to why at a time when money is such a big issue in this town, we need to have such a fancy over the top new library. I do see the need for a new building, but not for a Mercedes structure. It would have been nice to have had a choice between a Toyota library and a Mercedes one, not just between a Mercedes one and nothing. Is there any way at this point to decrease the scope of the new building and thus the size of the override? There is not. Ms. Schmidt? Yes. Did, uh, I'll turn to Jay. You had that question, you want that answered, correct? Well, I figure that the answer is no. That's correct. We're debating the uh, this authorization tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Larry Link. This, then I will turn to uh, uh, the motion to uh, to terminate debate. Mr. Link. Larry Link, Precinct 1. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a member of the Belmont uh, Library Foundation and helped raise funds for it and personally made contributions to it. I think this is a well-researched, vetted endeavor. It's been going on for a decade. There was substantial opportunity for the public to comment and the, pers the, the voices yielded the project we're evaluating. Deferring only exacerbates the costs and the risks. I think that like senior centers, libraries across the nation are doubling down on their commitment to be the hub of their communities. To say everything is knowledge is going online and you can get it at your laptop is naive and closed-minded. Look at the library after six o'clock and tell me how many people of an older age go there, both to socialize and use the resources. I often hear that Belmont does not maintain its buildings. I believe this to be false. There are certainly errors made now and then, but our town, its leaders and town meeting frequently and repeatedly invest capital in our physical, our physical plant. To delay this project will only consume enormous sums as we fix problems as they occur. Now is the time, if not now, when? We have a long deferred maintenance pipeline because we always waffle and put things off. Now is the time to act. We've had great demonstration by people who've stepped up with dollars, pennies from kids, dollars from adults, major dollars from other donors. This is a strong project and we should vote for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Link. Uh, I'll now come back to uh, Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Travis Frank, Precinct 5. I appreciate your flexibility and, and cooperation. Uh, I call the question. Is there a second to Mr. Frank's motion? Yes, there is. So, uh, uh, Mr. Ellen, Moderator. how many people in line, please? Ellen O'Brien, Cushman Town Clerk. Uh, there are 13 people in line. All right. So, we have 13 people in line and... Uh, it's up to us, town meeting members, whether we wish to terminate debate or continue. So um, this obviously, again, takes two-thirds vote. 
Uh, let's open the poll. If you favor terminating debate, debate, vote yes. If you'd like to continue the debate, vote no. All right, 10 more seconds. All right, let's close the polls, display the result. So this uh, does pass, 184 in favor, 74 opposed. We have two emergency votes uh, that uh, one each way, so 185 to 75, clear uh, two-thirds majority. So let's scroll. We will then, uh, following the scrolling, go to the, uh, immediately to the vote on the motion itself. And following that, we will dissolve town meeting. All right, so thank you. We now go to the uh, debate terminated. We now go to the motion under Article 2, the appropriation. Um, all those in favor of the motion to appropriate 34.5 million will vote yes. Those opposed, no. I was muted. Uh, this is obviously a critical vote. We're gonna close the uh, poll in a moment, but we're also uh, 
want to make sure we include all the emergency votes. <laughs> Let's close the polls and display the tally. 226 in favor, 26 opposed, eight abstentions. There are three emergency votes, two in favor, one opposed. So the final tally is 228 in favor, 27 opposed, eight abstentions. Why don't we scroll in and we take our time scrolling since it's an important vote. I want to thank town meeting members for a uh, constructive discussion tonight and all of your uh, commitment to the town of Belmont. All right, once again, uh, the final tally, 228 in favor, 27 opposed, eight abstention. That completes action uh, for this special town meeting. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Palillo, would you like to read this motion? Um, yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator, of course, uh, Mark Palillo, Chair of the Select Board Town Meeting Member at Large, move that the special town meeting be dissolved. Thank you, Mr. Pill. Thank the Select Board and all the committees for their work. Uh, I will accept unanimous consent on this motion. Seeing no objection, um, it is adopted unanimously. Once again, thank you to all those put in hard work uh, on this.